In the previous lecture, we studied how to find local XML of function of two variables. We didn't do anything with the global XML. We will do that in the next section with Lagrange multiplier method. Okay, so today we just study applications of XML. We will solve some optimization problem involving functions of several variables. And then we apply that method to solve the least squares problem. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's move to the first topic, solve some applied optimization problems. Uh, here's the first example, finding maximum volume. So look at this picture, please. We have some rectangular box. And, you know, this box is resting on the XY plane with one vertex at the origin, right? One guy's in here. And then you, 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 you imagine, you, so you fix one vertex, right? And then you, you, you pull another vertex right here. And then this vertex, you know, just pull along the plane, along this plane. Okay, so for each each point here, you have one rectangular box. Make sense? Um, and they ask us to find the point, to find this guy, you know, the position of this guy, such that the volume of this box is maximum. All right? So, you know, as in calculus one, when they ask you to do something, to find maximum or minimum volume or area, right? In this situation, it's maximum volume. It means you have to find it. You have to find to find the function, right? To find the function. Because if if you don't have the function, so it's no way to maximize it. Make sense? So we have to find the volume function in this case. Okay? So how to find that? You look at this picture first. You know, this point, is on the is on the plane so that means the coordinate of this point satisfies the equation of the plane that's the first thing okay so you know basically what is that if this point is the x the coordinate of this guy okay let me change the coloring here if the coordinates of this guy is x y and z right so basically x y and z satisfies this equation the equation of the plane so that means you have at least one relationship between x and y and z, right? And if the if the coordinate of this guy is x, y, and z, so what is the volume of this rectangular box? So we know that, right? Because that is rectangular box. So one, this is x, this is y, so this is z. The volume is just product of x and y and z. Is that correct? Here we have... The, the, the function, the volume function is just x, y, and z. That is the volume. You know, that is the volume. Okay. So, we have product. That means we have function of three variables in here. Okay. But, but x and y and z satisfy the equation of the plan right here. So, basically, that is our constraint, right? So, the volume is x, y, and z. But... Together with the condition 6x plus 4y plus 3z equal to 24. And we need to maximize you know, x, y, z with this condition. That's it. All right, let's move to the next slide. So, that is, that is the thing I just explained to you. We have the volume x, y, and z. So, let's say... We had volume right here. Let's add one more row. The volume is x times y times z. But at the same time, you know, x, y, and z satisfies this condition. From this equation, I can solve for the z. So I get z equal to 1 third 24 minus 6x minus 4y, right? And then I will plug z into, into this function. So that's why I have, you know, the volume will be a function of two variables, x and y, and instead of z, I have this value. So we just for this out, oh, we just for this out, okay? So you get this function. 
you get this function. That's one third 24x squared minus 6x squared y minus 4x y squared. And the only thing you need to do is to maximize this function. But, but that's not all. We maximize this function, but with the condition that, you know, x and y greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Uh, so we know how to do that. Let's differentiate. Five partial derivatives, okay? Five partial derivatives. And then set them equal and equal to zero. Right? In order to find all critical points. All critical points. And then you can use second derivative test to test it. If the critical part, if that part is local maximum or local minimum, right? And maybe that is global maximum, global minimum too. The second derivative test. Or, you know, you can just, you know, calculate, test, pick some part around that critical point to test if that is maximum or minimum. Okay? You know, uh, it really depends on the situation, but anyway. We we have function. We need to find partial derivatives first. Here are partial derivatives. So you differentiate with respect to the x, right? Uh, probably I have to do that uh, in the previous slides, okay? So that it's easier for you to follow. So let me copy this guy. I want to copy this guy. Uh, that is you know, one third 24x. So if I differentiate this guy with respect to the x, I get the following one, vx. Uh, that is one third 24y, right? Because the derivative of x is one and y is just a constant. I mean, in case when we differentiate with respect to the x. For the next term, I get minus 12xy, right? Because the derivative of x squared is 2x, 2x2 two with 6 is 12, and then minus 4y squared. That is the partial derivative with respect to the x. And you can find partial derivative with respect to the y. That is one third. Here I have 24y, and then minus 6x squared, right? You see from here, 6x squared, and then minus 8xy. Okay, so this squared I have in, in the next in the next slide, you see, they have one third 24y minus 12xy minus 4y squared, and in another one, one third 24x minus 6x squared minus 4x, uh, 8xy. Uh, since in, in vx, y is common, so they factor y out, you see, they factor y out right here, and then we can factor x out from the partial derivative with respect to the y. You know, that is that is very, 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 that makes our life much easier when we solve the system of linear equation because we have to put this guy equal to zero and, and this guy equal to zero to find critical points. Make sense? So, <clears throat> we put them equal to zero uh, from here. Let me solve Two equations for you so from the first equation y equal to 0 or 24 minus 12x minus 4y equal to 0 from the second I have x equal to 0 or 24 minus 6x minus 8y equal to 0 so you know overall I have a lot of uh, points in here, at least four points, not only two points, okay? So I have to pick one one case in here, okay? So I have to pick zero, y equal to zero, and consider with the x equal to zero, or this guy. And then after that, I consider the case of this guy, and then of course with the x equal to zero and, and this equation. 
So basically, I have four cases in here, okay? I have four cases in here. I mentioned four cases. Okay, four cases. The first case, of course, that is x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. So we fix this one critical part, right? The second case, when y equal to 0 and 24 minus 6x minus 8y equal to 0. So you just plug y equal to 0 into the second equation. And so for the x, you get y equal to 0 and x equal to 24 over 6, which is 4. So that is the second critical pause, right? And then the next situation, when you have 24 minus 12x minus 4y equal to 0 and x equal to 0. From here, you get x equal to 0 and y equal to 6. And the last case, and the last case is the case when you have two, two equations right here. Two equations right here. So you have to solve the system of linear equation, right? Uh, <clears throat> let's solve this and see. Uh, uh, we have our writing here. So we, we'll go back to the slide later, right? We try to try to find all critical points. So um, I have uh, I think I can simplify, you know, a little bit, right? Let's make, uh, let's make it a little bit. I, from the first equation, I divide both sides by 2. Let's do this. I divide both sides by 2, okay? So I will get 12. Uh, okay, let's say 12 minus 6x minus 2y equal to 0. Okay? Uh, and he have 24 minus 6x minus 8y equal to 0. So let's take the second and subtract the first, right? Or, you you know, we can subtract them. Let's say that. Not necessary. So, so I have negative 12. 6x, negative 6x with negative 6x will be cancelled out. Negative 2y minus negative 8y will be plus 6y, okay? And that is 0. From here, I get y equal to 2, okay? And then once I have y, I will substitute y back in one of these two equations. So let's say we pick the first one, right? Let's pick the first one from here. I get 12 minus 6x minus 2 times 2 equal to 0. And then from here, uh, this is just 4. So I have 6x equal to 12 minus 4, which is 8. And then x equal to, you know, 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3. So, together with this, I have one, uh, I have the fourth Greek point, 4 thus. x equal to 4 thus. All right. So, basically, we have four Greek points, right? The first one x, y equal to 0. The second one, x equal to 4 and y equal to 0. Next one, x equal to 0, y equal to 6. And the last one, x equal to 4 thirds and then y equal to 2. It's what they're having here. 0, 0, 4, 0. 0, 6, and then 4 plus 2. And now, since we have four critical points, you know, the next step is just plug all critical points into the function, right? So our function looks like uh, we don't have function in this slide. So I would like to go back to the function in the previous slide. So I go back to this function. You can see that if x and y, x or y equal to 0, the volume is 0. Is that correct? So, for, 
three cases zero zero in here four zero and zero six the volume will be zero makes sense so that's what they're explaining here as zero zero four zero and zero six the volume is zero of course that is you know that is that should not be the maximum right so uh we still have only one critical point to consider that is four thirds and two all right so <clears throat> in this case you can use the second derivative test for the second derivative test you need to find the second partial derivative okay so once you have second partial derivatives uh you you can plug the point into the determinant and test it okay let me explain that uh but before that i need to copy the the first derivative because otherwise i cannot show you uh all right what what is the first derivative they are here okay they are here so <clears throat> Uh, if you if you want to find v x x, so that means you have to differentiate this guy with respect to the x. Let me show you. You have to differentiate this guy with respect to the x, right? And then if you want to find v x y, you differentiate that with respect to the y. Okay. So if you differentiate this guy with respect to the x, you will get, uh, you know, you you just differentiate the 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 mid. The middle, the middle term, which is negative twelve x, because all the terms does not have do not have x, right? So the derivative with respect to the x just zero, makes sense. So the second partial derivative with respect to the x is just negative four y. Okay, it's just negative four y, and so on. You can you 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 can do that. You differentiate with respect to the y. And you get the for from the first term right here, you get eight y right. No, you just get eight. Sorry, and from the second term, uh, for y over three and twelve x, you will get four x negative with the negative, and from the last one y over three with negative four y, that means negative four y squared over three, you get negative eight y over three. So overall. You get the following. Oh, you get oh. You get the following uh, result. V x x is negative four y. We just discussed about that. V y y is negative a x over three, and the mixed second partial derivatives is like this. Okay, and 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 uh, <clears throat> what is the second partial derivative test? We have to set up the determinant, right? So we need to set up d, the number d. That is the determinant of what? Of vxx, vxy, vyx, and then vyy. We have to calculate the determinant, right? At this at this point, at the point four thirds and two, right here. Okay, so once you have all these, uh, you know, derivatives, you just plug x equal to 3, 4, uh, 4 thirds and 2, and y equal to 2 uh, into this. So basically, you get the following one. Let's say when x equal to 4 thirds and y equal to 2, okay, and y equal to 2. So I have this guy is equal to <coughs> vxx. I have um, negative 4 times y is 2. Vxy and Vyx is the same. So in this situation, I can calculate this. I have 1 third, 24 minus 12x is 4 over 2. Okay, 4 over 2. And then minus 8y is 8 times 2. Okay. And... You know this number will be here too because they are the same, right? And uh, v y y is negative eight times x is four third, right? And then everything divide by by three, okay? So overall, I will have the following number. <clears throat> so they calculate right here, okay? You can see this in here. 
So basically, you know, when they when they calculate the determinant, this guy is just equal to Vxx times Vyy, you see? Vxx times Vyy minus Vxy squared. The square, because you have this number right here and this number right here. That's why when you multiply them, you get square. And then you plug all numbers into this, you get negative 8. You see, that is negative 8. That is negative 32 over 3. And then the number right here is negative 8 over 3. So that's why they have square right here. And uh, the number D is 64 over 3, which is greater than 0. That's good. That means you can classify the, the extra mile right here, right? When D is bigger than 0. Uh, and then now you look back. You look back this value. This value. This value, right? This value is negative. When and this guy is positive. So this critical point is local maximum. And that is the only local maximum of the function. Make sense? Alright, so I can I can do conclusion that. Oh. I can do conclusion. Fortus and two. Is the only local maximum. Now look at this, the picture of the function, right? Uh, <clears throat> the domain of the function is the triangle. Okay, that's the triangle on the x y plane, and we found that the function has four critical points. The first one is right there for zero. The second one is the origin, and the, last, the third one is zero six, right? And the last one is four third two. So we have four critical points, but at this, at that time, you know, three critical points are already on vertices of the triangle, which is the the domain of this function. You know, the theory says that in that situation. In order to find uh, global maximum or global minimum of the function, we just need to compare function values at vertices and at all critical points inside of the domain. And we know that the function values at you know four or three vertices are already zero. So uh, we just need to, to can compute the function values at 4 thirds and 2. Right? And then, you know, once we have that, we can see, yeah, the, the, the function values at 4 thirds and 2 is bigger than 0. So that means that guy is global maximum. Because that is only critical points. And we know that that is local maximum. Make sense? Thanks to that discussion, they just plug 4 thirds and 2 into the function. And they found that actually the maximum volume is 64 over 9 cubic units. Done. All right. So I hope that, you know, the problem is clear enough. Uh, let me go. Let me go over again, right? The problem before we move to the next one. Let's go back to previous slides. <clears throat> All right. So we need to find the maximum volume of the box, of the rectangular box, where one vertex is at the origin and another vertex moves along the plane. 6x plus 4y plus 3z equal to 24, okay? Now, we need to find the volume function. <sighs> the volume function is product of x, y, and z. That is obvious because the box is rectangular. At the same time, 6x plus 4y plus 3z equal to 24 because that vertex is on the plane. Means x, y, z should satisfy the equation of the plane. And of course, x and y and z are non-negative. Okay? So, thanks to that, we have the, 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 the function v is x, y, z and then we solve the equation of the plane with respect to the z. We plug it back 
to the function, the volume function. So we get Vx y. So volume depends only on x and y. Okay. And now we have to find the maximum of this function. Uh, the method we learned in the previous lecture is first we need to find all critical points. Need to find all partial derivative and set them equal to zero. Right? And then you may use the second derivative test to test it. If this point is local maximum or minimum. And here we found uh, uh, I think I make a typo in here. Um, we, here we found partial derivative. Here should be, I think should be y in here. Okay. So uh, here we found partial derivative with respect to the x and y. And the, 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 the principle when we uh, differentiate partially is when you differentiate with respect to the x, you look at y as a constant. When you differentiate with respect to the y, you look at x as a constant. Okay? So basically, you go with function of one variable all the time, right? Uh, all right. So once we, we, we found all partial derivatives, we set them equal to zero, and we, we have to solve that. You know, sometimes you can solve that easily. Sometimes uh, it's very long, like this situation. Okay. Let's go over again. I have two partial derivatives right here and set I set them equal to zero. Okay. I set them equal to zero. So from the first equation, I have two cases. Y equal to zero or this guy equal to zero. From the second equation, I also have two cases. X equal to zero or this guy equal to zero. But when you compile them together, so you would get four cases. This guy together with this guy is the first case, right? The second case, this guy with this guy, okay? The next case, the third case, this guy with this guy. And then the last case, this guy with this guy. So you have four cases in here. Means you have four situations and four system of linear equations. You have to solve all of them. The first case, obvious, because x, y are zero already. The second case, also very good, because you plug y equal to zero. And then you just solve for the x. The, the third case is also good because you have x equal to 0 already. And the only last case, right, you need to solve. So we solve that right here. And, you know, here I just do a very simple method. Uh, it's just, you know, substitution. So I found all four points, right? And I plug four points into the original function. I see that actually... When x or y equal to zero, you know, the function is zero. So we don't have maximum over there. We still have only one point where the function may attend maximum. Okay, may attend. We need to check this. All right. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we apply the second derivative test. We need to find mixed derivatives and the second partial derivatives, right? So we have to find Vx, Vyy, Vyx. And then we plug all, num all values x and y, where x is 4 thirds, y is 2, into the, determin the determinant d. And then you have to find this number right here. And we found that, yeah, d at this point is 64 over 3 greater than 0. That's good. We have hope to see maximum or minimum. In order to classify, we need to check the value, the size of, of Vxx, the size of Vxx right here. If this guy is positive, that the value at this point is local minimum. If this guy is negative, so we have local maximum over there, okay? And, 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 and in this situation, that value is negative because that equal to negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. So this, this point is local maximum. And the function has only one local maximum. That means, you know, that should be global maximum. Make sense? Uh, yeah, l let's say this. Um, uh, <clears throat> So this point in, in that region, 
Make sense? In that region. And you have, you know, uh, just that is the highest point. That is the highest point. So uh, you have local, uh, global maximum uh, at that point. And then in all to phi, you know, that value, you just plug 4 plus and 2 into the volume function to phi, the maximum value. Okay? You know, that, that, that is a very long problem. But, you know, the, the idea is very clear enough. So partial derivative, second derivative test, and that's it. All right, let's move to the least square problems. So what is this and how to solve them, okay? Uh, <clears throat> you know, we have, we have different, different ways to explain about the least squares problem. Uh, and here, I can tell you one example, right? One example. Whatever you see in this slide, okay, you can read that. But here's the, the case. <clears throat> if you consider some uh, experiments, right, and you have some data points, okay, your data points look like this, maybe in here, maybe in here, maybe in here, maybe in here, in here, in here, and so on, right? Uh, after each period of time, makes sense? For example, here is zero, here is one, here is two. Uh, let's say it's not good right here, but I suppose that is three, that is four, that is five, that is six, that is seven, that is eight, and so on. So you measure, right? You measure uh, at each period of time, you get some value in here. For example, this y1, this y2, that is y3, that is y4, that is y5, that is y6, that is y7, that is y8, and so on. So you have... You, in this case, you have eight data points. Um, <clears throat> you want to find a curve or a straight line that fixed most to all data points. Make sense? You know, in Excel, you can do the following uh, activity. So you can connect zero with this guy. You get connect this, connect this, connect this, 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 this and this. You get some curve, you see that? But now this curve is like, yeah, this curve is okay. But firstly, this curve is not differentiable on the whole. Why? Because this curve is not differentiable at those points, at vertices in here. Because we have linear, make sense? So yeah, maybe that is not good. I would like to do the following. I would ask to find, for example, a straight line like this. Right, that that fix. Let's say that fix most to the data points, or you may find, uh, you know, uh, some parabola that fix most to all data points, and maybe you consider polynomials of higher degrees. Okay, so that is the least squares problem. Okay, uh, let's move to the next slides. Here's the explanation. You have data points. Yeah. And you see, yeah, actually, you don't, you, you will not, you will not have a straight line that pass through all these data points. Because they are, you know, basically, you know, in general, they, they should not belong to a, a straight line. So we need to find that straight line. And how? Okay. Uh, that is least square problem. And here's the quadratic polynomials. Here should be. I would say here should be x square, okay? Here should be x square, but by some reason, uh, they cannot write it in this PowerPoint, okay? And then you see, they can find the the most fit, right? The most fit. This parabola does not pass through all points, but that is closest, okay? All right. So that is also least square problem, you know, but for quadratic polynomials. <clears throat> and here's the general case. So uh, we have n data points. Okay, we have n data points. This is data points. N data points. And 
you can find the sum of square arrows. What does it mean sum of square arrows? So <clears throat> you need you need to 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 model this, right? As they said in here, you need to find y equal to fx fix the collection of the points. Yeah? Fx fix mostly, right? The collection of the points. That means when you when you when you see when you, you when you calculate the difference so the arrow will be the minimum and and how the arrow can be computed the arrow can be computed using this formula okay look at this how uh, how, how to express this on the graph okay uh, let's say we can go back to the previous slides right uh, you look at this first first look at this carefully that is sum of squares of the difference between between the function value at x i and then the y i where the y i's are here in the data pause. Make sense? So let's go back to previous slides and we'll see that right away. <clears throat> let's zoom this out, okay? Zoom this out. So so we need to find the function that is the function y equal to f of x. You see? And how to find the arrow, for example, at this point. At this point, I have this guy. This is already the y i, right? Or y1, okay? So the function right here, that is f of x1. And the arrow is this, is this interval. This is the arrow. Okay, this is the arrow at this point. And then you move to the next one. This next one is x equal to 5. So this is the function, the, the, the y coordinate, which is 2, right? And then what is the function value? So the, here's the function value. You see? That is f of 5. And what is the arrow? The arrow is right here. Make sense? And then you know you you just move to from point to point, right? And see, and you calculate all the arrows, right? And then you square them, and you take sum of squares of arrows. You take sum of squares of arrows, and then you get the following function. You get this function. You see that? And and if the sum of square arrows is minimum, so your function is good. Make sense? And and your 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 duty is to find such function f. Agree. All right. <clears throat> so you know uh, that can be done using function of multiple variables. Okay, function of multiple variables. Why? Uh, let me skip these slides. Let me skip these slides. <clears throat> Here, they give you the theorem right away, but you know, I don't like this. I want to explain the idea how to solve that, okay? How to get this, how to get this uh, formulas. And, and in this situation, you know, they just, they, just, they just show you the least squares regression lie. It's very simple. That means just function, just linear function. You can see right here, that is just a linear function, right? You see, this is f of axp, okay? Anyway, how to get that? <coughs> Let me let me rewrite the, the, the sum of squares of arrows for you, okay? Sum of square of arrows would looks like sum of f x i minus y i and then square. Look at this. So you need to find the function f, right? F is polynomial. So uh, if f is polynomial. So let's say linear, right? In this case, linear. So that means you have you have to find a and b, because you need you need coefficients a and b to determine a linear polynomial. Make sense? If your function is quadratic, so you would need a and b and c. Right? But it depends how they ask you to do. In this case, they ask you to find linear only. So <clears throat> I can write like this: it's sum of a x i plus b minus y i square you see that and and this is function of two variables okay i can say this is function of a and b where i is from one to n 
So I hope you still remember the Sigma notation, right? I is from 1 to m. So you know, this function of two variables, so you just differentiate, you find partial derivatives like previous example, and set them equal to zero, and then, you know, you find critical points. And you, 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 you can convince yourself using second derivative test that that critical points will give you, you know, lo global minimum. Okay? And, and once you differentiate that, and then you solve for critical points, actually, that critical points is right here. That is the critical point. That's it. You know, it's easy to verify. You can differentiate this function easily, this function easily, and then you set them equal to zero. Make sense? Everything would be good. Okay? So once you have, you know, formula, you can just plug data points x, i, y, i into this to get, you know, what you need. All right. That is the case when they ask you to find a linear function, right? Let me discuss the case when they ask you to find quadratic function. The same idea, but in this situation, we have the following. That is the first case. The second case, when your function is ax squared plus bx plus c. So you have function of three variables, which are equal to sum of a x i square plus b x i plus c minus y i square. You see, if you have function of three variables, you also do the same, right? You differentiate partially with respect to a, b, and c, and set them equal. Instead of system of two equations, you have system of three equations, right? And you find what you need. That is the whole idea of how to use count plus three to solve least square problems. Okay. Okay, uh, let's move to the next slide. <clears throat> it's just they give you, right? If x values are symmetrical space about the y is 6 and the sum is 0, so from those formula, you can simplify that, you get these formulas. Uh, probably we will not stop at this. Uh, we just try to show one problem, okay? Uh, here they ask you to find the least squares regression lie, okay? It's just a lie, no problem. Means, you know, uh, f of x equal to ax plus b for the points negative 3, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, and 3, 2, 3. So basically you have four points in here, right? Uh, and they make a table for you. It's very easy to follow. So uh, for this table x, y, x value in here, uh, and y value in here, they calculate x, y, and x square because in in, in the in the formula of critical points we have those right. They found you know sum of x i, sum of y i, sum of x i y i, and sum of x i square, and then they plug everything into the formula. Right here, here's the A, here's the A, and here's the B. And then they found A and B. That's it. So, you know, uh, to apply the formula, it's not interesting and it's not difficult. But I hope that you understand the idea. I hope that you understand the idea how to find those formulas in here. Okay, so we we might we need to find the the minimum minimum error of sum of minimum of sum of squares of errors. Right, this is error, and then once this guy will attain minimum, you get what you need. Okay, let's consider the following example. You can see that on your screen. After a new turbo changer for an automobile engine was developed, right? The following experimental data were obtained for speed y in the miles per hour at two second time interval x. So here's the table. Uh, the first column, uh, the first row is about the time, 
and uh, the second row is the speed y which is the y is the y value and this is the x value okay so uh, they ask us to find the least squares regressions correct for the data that means we have to work with we have to find you know the polynomial y equal to a zero or let's say a plus b x plus c x square okay um such that uh such that you know this is the most fit to data uh the most fit the most fits right to the data right we we need to write the the sum of squares of arrows right we need to write sum of squares of arrows So what is that? That is sum of f of x i minus y i square, right? Where i is from one to n, and in this situation we have one, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, six point means you know I can write here just i from one to six right away, right? So less confusing, okay? So what is f of i? Here's i. Okay, L let me write all sums in here, and then and then we'll see. For the first one, you know, the function, our, our function is is quadratic equation, right? Uh, quadratic function, a plus b, x plus c squared. So basically, I have the following one. The first sum at 0, 0. So I plug 0 into the function, I get a, right? And then minus y, 0. y, 0 is 0. So I have a minus 0 squared. Make sense? The next one is b. I move to 15. 15, I plug 15 into the function. I have f15, right? And minus, no, f2, sorry. I have f2. The second one is f2. x is 2. So uh, I have f2 minus y2. But what is that? Let me write this, right? f2 minus y2. So what is f of 2? f of 2 is a plus 2b plus 4c. Or I write 2 square c. 2 square c. And what is y? y2. y2 is minus 50. So that is the second term. Let me just mark right here the first term. The second term. Make sense? And so on. You can write all the terms. Okay, well, let's move to the next one. Uh, when xi equal to... 4, right? When x i equal to 4, I have a plus 4b plus 4 square c minus 30 because 30 is y3. That is the next term and so on. The next one is a plus 6b plus 6 square c minus 50 square, right? And then the next term is a plus a b plus a square c minus 65 square you can see this data from the table of data points and then the last one is a plus 10 when x i equal to 10 right plus 10 square c minus 70 square so basically in the sum in your sum the sum of arrow you have six terms the first term is a square. The second term is this guy. The third term is this guy. The fourth one, the fifth one, and then the, the sixth one. And then you sum them up. You get the sum of arrows. Make sense? And of course, we need to minimize the sum of arrows. We need to minimize the function under the square root y right? uh, and uh, we need to work with partial derivatives agree so we need to work with partial derivative all right so let's repeat this the first step we need to find so now uh, i think uh, i will just erase the square root okay because we, we just need to minimize the square of the square root so let me erase the square root in here Okay, 
and that is our function uh, let me denote this by f of a and b and c okay so have function of three variables the first step we need to do is find partial derivative we need to find partial derivative and and set them equal to zero and set them equal to zero so i remind you this step is just to find to find critical part right critical parts so let's do that together <clears throat> Let's find partial derivative with respect to the a. So we have, because we have three variables, we have three partial derivatives. So let's say f with respect to the a. Uh, you differentiate this function with respect to the a. Uh, oh, I think I, I saw one typo in here. Uh, this should be c. This should be c. So let me fix that. This should be c. Okay. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> uh, when you differentiate with respect to the A, you know, you look at B, C as numbers. So, uh, derivative with respect to the A of B and C would be zero. Okay? So, uh, the first term right here, the A, will give you 2A, right? Give you 2A. The second, the second term right here with the 2, so I use the chain rule. Uh, I have the following one. I have plus 2 times and then a plus 2b plus 4c minus 50. Use the chain rule. And then the second one, I also use the chain rule. I have 2 times a plus 4b plus 16c minus 30. Okay. The next one, also the chain rule plus 2 times a plus 6b plus 36c minus 50 and then so on the next one is 2a plus ab plus 64c minus 65 square and the last one is 2a plus 10b plus 100c minus 70 so that is the equation uh, the, the first the partial derivative with respect to the a you see uh, you know <clears throat> here you can see a everywhere two everywhere right two everywhere when you set this equal to zero you can simplify two so basically uh, we we have less computation make sense anyway we will see the following uh, formula Let's simplify this and I set this equal to zero. Okay, so I ignore two. Okay, I ignore two in here. I don't have two anymore. Uh, and I have the following one. For the A, so I have 1A, 2A, 4A, 6A, 7A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6A. So I have 6A. 6A is 6. The number 6 is corresponding to 6 equations. Don't forget this. Because you have six terms in here. You see this? You have six terms in here. So each time, you know, each time you have, you know, 1A. So you have 6A. All right. So for the B, for the B, first you have 2B. You have 4B, 6B, AB, 10B. So what is that? What is that? Actually, you just take sums of all coefficients in here. You see this? The, 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 the first column, the, the second column. You know, what is six? Six is sum of six ones in here. Look at this. You have six ones in here, you see? Uh, for the B, you have sums of coefficients in here. And for the C, you have all this right here. And you can see the free coefficient looks like this, sum of all three entries on the, on the B. So basically, I can write the following one plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 
you know, I, I, I would like to write zero in here too because, you know, that is one value. So after this, we, we can generalize, you know, the formula. Make sense? 6 plus 8 plus 10, B. And then for the C, you can see that is 2 square. That is, okay, let's say 0 square. 0 square plus 2 square plus 4 square plus 6 square plus 8 square plus 10 square. And then, that is the coefficient of C, okay? And then the free coefficient, I just write in another side. So basically, that is sum of all entries in the B. Sum of all entries in the B. Let's see, that is 0, 15, 20, 30, 50, 65, and 70. So I have 0 in here plus 30 plus uh, 50 plus 65, I guess, yes, 65 and plus 70. So the first equation looks very simple, right? Okay, here's, here's the key, right? The coefficient of A right here is the sum of, is the number of what? Of equation. Okay? Uh, the coefficient of B in this situation is sums of the X values, right? This one is sum of squares of the X value. Is that correct? And the free coefficient right here, that is sum of entries. Or let's say sum of values of sum of the y, the y values. So now, you know, even you don't need, you don't need to differentiate, but you still can find, you know, the first equation when the partial derivative with respect to the a equal to zero. So you just take sums of all these values, the number of equations, the x values, the squares of x values, and then the sum of y values. Make sense? So uh, I, will not, I will not simplify this. I hope you can do that yourself. Okay? So you can find all these values, and then you have one linear equation. So this is the first our linear equation. The first linear equation. All right, let's work on partial derivative with respect to the B. Okay, so I need to find FB. What is FB in this case? So we just differentiate with respect to the B. Uh, for the first, I don't have any B because you know zero over there. So I would I, I just say yeah zero. For the second term, for the second term in here, I differentiate with respect to the B. I need to use the chain rule. Okay. So if I differentiate, okay, let me do that for each term and then we sum them up. And again, we will generalize, right? Like previous equation. So uh, let me make this. I just want to copy this, right? Okay, uh, where is the copy? I don't see the copy in here, but I think I can move this. Interesting, oh no. No, that will just cut up, you know, the formula. Uh, okay, so let me let me write in here, and then we copy to to the next. So I write, I want to find derivative of this with respect to the b. I will have two, and then a plus two b plus four c minus fifteen times two. Well, we have two right here because two we differentiate the inside. We get two in here, right? And this two will go here. So basically, what is that? You have two times of two. This is the x coordinate. Don't forget that. The x value. You see that? X value for, for the first term. So, <clears throat> all right. And then similarly, I can find the derivative, partial derivative with respect to the b of the second term, right? Now, I hope you can close your eyes and write that term. That is two times and then what? You copy the whole thing in here. 
and then plus 16c minus 30 and then you add 4 which is 4 which is the x value right the x value make sense so basically when you, you calculate for each term and you sum them up and then you set it equal to zero okay so again two will appear as common factor you can when you set it equal to zero you can simplify that agree but each time you have to multiply with this guy to the x value in here the x value in here all right so let me write it down uh oh my goodness i cannot see that um yeah i, I think i can see that right here i can copy from from this formula okay so that should looks like two times a plus 2b plus 4c minus 15 the next one is four times because the next x value is four okay a plus 4b plus 16c minus 30 you see and then each time when you increase that you just add you just add in here you have six six and then a plus 6b plus 36c minus 50 and then you move to the next data point you get plus uh, 8 a plus 8b plus 64c minus 65 and then plus 10 a plus 10b plus 100c minus 70 and you set this equal to zero I would like I would like to to mention here I just I already simplified two so basically we would have two times in here okay don't forget that two times in here multiply with everything and when we set it equal to zero you just simplify two so I guess now you can write the third equation right for partial derivative of f with respect to the c I will not explain that I just write the equation for you so I hope you can guess. The f of c, may, that should be 2 times also, right? But again, I will simplify to when I set this equal to 0, okay? When I set this equal to 0. The first term, instead of 2 in here, right? Instead of 2 in here, I will have 2 square. Instead of 4 in here, I will have 4 square. Instead of 6 in here, I will have 6 square. Instead of a, I will have a square. Instead of 10, I will have 10 square. Make sense? So I write real quick 2 square in here and then a plus 2b plus 4c minus 15 you know 2 square i write i write 2 square because i want to keep the the, the you know that room actually we need to write like instead of 4 i write 2 square it would be easier for you to imagine right so the next term would be 4 square a plus 4b plus 16c minus 30 and then the next term let me erase this the next term is plus 16 no 6 square and then a plus 6b plus 36c minus 50 okay and then <clears throat> plus a square a plus 8b plus uh, 64c minus 65 minus plus 10 square a plus 10b plus 100c minus 70 and equal to zero and multiply with the two so basically you already have you know three equations but again like the first equation i would like to generalize the second and the third equation so that you can see you know some some principle to write a system of linear equation for such problem okay so let's generalize L let's see how the second equation looks like in here or maybe just work with the third one because uh anyway yeah L let's work with the third one right <clears throat> So let's find the coefficient of a. The coefficient of a looks like zero square plus two square. Let's say I'm talking about the third equation, okay? The second equation looks uh, will be the same. Uh, two square plus 
4 square plus 6 square plus 8 square plus 10 square and that is the coefficient of a you see what is the coefficient of b the coefficient of b should look like uh, 0 cube plus 2 cube plus 4 cube plus 6 cube plus 8 cube plus 10 cube that is the coefficient of b you can see that why you have zero i, I write zero cube because i want to keep you know uh, the first data point but for the for, for the second one why we have four square four square and four we have four cube you see two square with two i have two cube makes sense i mean for the b for the b right here each time for the b i have six with the six i have eight with the a i have ten square with the ten so i have this one and of course you can guess with the c you would increase right you would increase the power in here so you get plus zero to the four plus two to the four plus four to the four plus six to the four plus a to the four plus ten to the four and then c make sense you see this and then for the free coefficient it also has some room right here okay so i copy in here so this is what this is the square right uh and then you you copy this you get two square plus two two, two square times what two square times okay i write zero square i write zero square times the first one for the zero okay i want to keep that that is zero right here okay so that is zero plus two square times times the the, the y coordinate for two what is the y coordinate that is 15 plus four square times what plus four square times 30 and then plus six square times 50 and plus a square times uh i think that is 60 65 and plus 10 square times 70. so that is the third equation please look at this one more time there is some rules in right here right for the c so you you work with the square so that's why you have z the first coefficient of a is zero square two square four square six square eight square ten square and then for the b you just increase to one you get cube and then for the next one you get four but for the free coefficient you just multiply all this so basically what is that look at this what is this so that is just you know if, if i write it in the form of vectors right that is just color product is it correct the scalar product of what of what of zero square of two square of four square of six square of a square and then of ten square scalar product with with a b right with the b right here uh with 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 zero 15 30 50 65 and then 70. so that is the free coefficient of the third equation and now i guess if you follow the same idea so you can rewrite you can rewrite the equation f b equal to zero f b equal to zero but the degree in this case will be less right so that will start from that will start from the first and then here would be the second and here would be the third right and in here would be the first one make sense so actually now after this example after this example if even you don't know about partial derivatives you still can derive three equations of this system and you can find a and b and c how about that how about that so <clears throat> Uh, let me write the third, uh, the second equation for you, which which is for f b equal to f b equal to c equal to zero. Okay, so for that I will collect all this one. I have zero plus two 
plus 4, plus 6, plus 8, plus 10, A. The next one I will have 0 square plus 2 square plus uh, 4 square plus 6 square plus A square plus 10 square, B. You see that? And then the next one for the C, I would get 0 cube plus 2 cube plus 4 cube plus 6 cube plus A cube plus 10 cube C. And the free coefficient would be 0 times 0 plus 2 times 15 plus 4 times 30 plus 6 times 50 plus A times 65 and then plus 10 times 70. Make sense? So, you know, uh, basically, you know, we already know the principle how to write these three system of linear equation without, now, even without computing partial derivative C, partial derivative A, and partial derivative B. Okay? And once you solve this system, you, you, you can find, you know, you can find the the ABC, you can find the ABC right here, the ABC. Or basically, this this serves like A star, B star, and then C star. And that's that's what you can determine. You know, the polynomial. P. Uh, X equal to A star plus B star X plus C star X square. All right. So. <clears throat> Um, since I have only one correct, you know, solution from homework, I would suggest you to solve this problem to the end. Uh, I already wrote three equations for you, okay? So please watch this video and copy these three equations and solve the system of linear equations with respect to the A and B and C. And please send me the solution. Okay, I, I would love to see the solution, you know, uh, by the end of this weekend. So uh, I hope that, you know, the video is clear enough and I hope that you enjoy the video. Anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so this, vi this video uh, is about two lectures for Monday and for Tuesday. And then I will make another videos for the another section, the last section. Uh, and I think we'll finish, you know, this chapter this week. I will do review on next Monday in another video, and maybe we can hold an online conference in Zoom so that, you know, I can answer on your questions and prepare you to the test, okay? Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.